We're here in Savona aboard the Azimut 72 and it's easy to stand here in the saloon and be distracted by the high glamour of the thing with this beautifully lacquered ebony here and these fantastic detailed touches but in fact what we discovered was a boat with very strong practical edge to it and also some very interesting technical underpinnings to it as well. Azimut wanted to provide the 72 with exceptionally good headroom throughout the boat. Uh, there's an astonishing two meters in the engine room even. They also wanted to provide a single level floor in the saloon to make it feel larger and be more practical of course. Uh, but of course to achieve that you have to gain height. You don't get something for nothing. So to offset the detriment to the handling that might have occurred from that increase in height and increase in CGs, they resin infused the whole of the superstructure and the flybridge in carbon fibre and by doing so they've saved roughly 30% they say of the weight of those parts and of course brought the centre of gravity down again and got back the handling they might have lost by building a taller boat. So the practical aspect I mentioned which impressed me so much about this boat is the sheer amount of storage on board. Now, this sort of glass cabinet is the sort of thing you'd find on most boats around this size. But, but what took me aback, really, was that every single seat in the saloon has storage underneath it. Uh, and storage runs throughout the boat, every little nook and cranny. So that focus on storage isn't just apparent inside, it's apparent out here on the deck as well. So on the flybridge we've got really good locker storage under the seats, all on gas struts so they're easy to use. Got a big anchor locker forward and two lockers in the superstructure in the wings uh, take a couple of fenders and walk. And this is one of my favorite bits. It's a big locker here and it's large enough to take something like a, a sea bob or those great big bull fenders that a lot of boats don't carry anymore because there's nowhere to store them. Uh, altogether, there's a lot of storage space on this boat outside. This particular area just seems colossal to me for this size of boat. The send bed is, is absolutely vast. Six people who get on there uh, and obviously a lot round here. There's a nice little detail here as well. There's an optional powered bimini that runs around the outside of this seating area here. When you've been testing azimuths for almost a couple of decades now, uh, it's easy to get excited about radical change like carbon superstructures and sort of overlook the, the stuff that they've been doing incredibly well for a long, long time. Uh, so their stern gear really hasn't changed for as long as I know and it works incredibly well. And you've got little details like access to the battery solenoids and the generator sets here. Uh, another little nice touch here which is access to the joystick which, uh, and the bow thrusters and stern thrusters which you can operate independently of the joystick if you want to uh, and that of course is terrific for stern to berthing in the med. I like all the little practical details that you come across when you wander down the side decks, things like this opening gate in the side here and then there's a little open locker here for a warp and a little diesel trap here save you polluting the water. Uh, really sturdy handrails here. Uh, and Azimut have taken advantage of this incredibly stiff carbon superstructure to extend the glass area almost right down to the side deck here. So you get a fantastic view out from the dinette inside. With the weight that Azimut has saved from infusing the, the top of the boat out of carbon, uh, they're confident they can extend the flybridge back almost to the back of the boat here. So there's a, plenty of space up here for a second tender if you want with a crane to pull it up with. There's a barbecue here and then moving forward uh, you know you'd expect a big table on a uh, on a 72 foot flybridge boat perhaps what you wouldn't expect uh, is a second table forward as well and this caught my eye as well I mean it's not you know it's not that we've never seen it before but it's just it's just nice to see such fantastic double skinned you know well molded bits of glass fibre up here when you've got 72 foot of boat to play with, of course, there are all sorts of places you could put the galley. Uh, you could put it down, you could put it aft near the cockpit. Uh, and of course, it's, uh, you know, aft near the cockpit has become very fashionable. And there are good arguments for putting it there. Uh, but let's not forget the advantage of putting the galley here in the middle, which Azimut has done, which is that you can have two private seating areas, one at the back of the saloon and a smaller sort of coffee and croissants area at the front here, and yet still leave space for a third seating area, which is your formal dinette opposite the galley, which is obviously very practical in terms of serving proper meals. So for me, the most impressive aspect of this helm is the view out that the helmsman 
get at any speed and however short or tall they may be. And the key to it is this fantastic seat. This is its lowest setting here but it goes up about another 6 inches, 150 mil. And it's very comfortable, the wheel is adjustable, there's only a single central mullion here so the view out through the front screens is particularly clear. I know these little seating areas are uh, sort of fairly commonplace these days, but I really love the detailing in this particular area with this chunky stainless steel handrail here, which protects the edge of the table and also protects you when you lurch around. Uh, and there's a lovely little dressing table here for doing my makeup in the morning. Now the storage in here isn't sort of exceptional really, you have about the normal sort of regulation level of drawers and a, a big wardrobe over there until you consider that Azimut has gone to the trouble of providing this great big storage area under the bed. I really do have to point out just how exceptionally well finished this ebony is. Of course because it's it's nearly black, just like it's a dark blue hull, it shows every little imperfection. So of course Azimut have tried to eliminate the imperfections entirely and they've done a flipping good job. Uh, the lacquer work is fantastic and they've put tiny little radiuses down all the corners so that uh, you're going to get less sort of chipping on the edges and it's easier to apply a good coat of lacquer in the most exposed place down the edge. We're in the owner's ensuite heads compartment here and uh, of course this is the largest one but it's worth remembering that all four double cabins on this boat all have their own ensuite heads which is something of a bonus. And even in here Azimut have gone to great length to maximise the storage so whereas uh, many builders might have left this as a dummy drawer because of the waste pipe going through they've made the effort to cut around the waste pipe here so you get that little bit of extra storage in these top two drawers, which I think is real attention to detail. One of the things we do when we test a boat is to go around and measure everything, you know, principally headrooms all the way through the boat and berth sizes too. And one of the things I really liked about this boat is that they're consistent throughout the boat. So there isn't a cabin where the berth's a couple of inches less or a couple of inches more. And the headroom as well. So the headroom in all the principal uh, guests, we're in the principal guest cabin here, but all the guest cabins is a constant six foot six, so just a fraction under two meters, 1.98 meters. And again, all the berth lengths are around six foot three, 1.91 meters. So you may be in the fourth guest cabin, but you're not going to be shortchanged.